best bring you up to speed. Nigeria, the NNPC has been providing some details about the state of Nigeria, or so the status of Nigeria's uh, petroleum industry. The total daily demand is now uh, put at 50 million liters. Uh, the total daily consumption, about 24 million liters. Uh, according to the data from the uh, State Oil Corporation, total under recovery, or uh, AKA a fuel subsidy, is 774 million naira per day. Uh, that takes you to the doorstep of 24 billion naira per month. Multiply that by, by uh, 12 months uh, in a year, and you can see how uh, much um, bleeding, bloodletting we, are, we have as far as petrol is concerned. Uh, the meantime, this uh, uh, press statement from the NNPC, which was uh, put together, of course, with the uh, Nigeria Customs Service, says that the cross-border smuggling is, has led to a major surge in petrol daily evacuation in Nigeria from 35 million liters per day to 60 million liters per day. It's very simple there to do the math, isn't it? So, uh, the uh, NNPC says 16 state governments account for 2,201 petrol stations across Nigeria. And smugglers use most of these frontier petrol stations in communities that border Nigeria's international and coastal waters as a conduit to siphon Nigeria's locally refined and imported uh, petrol. So let's uh, uh, have put some uh, petrol in the fire right now as we bring in Villiams Mowe, who is an investment uh, analyst with Afrinvest, is making a debut here discussing oil and gas this morning with us. Good morning. good morning. It's good to have you. I'm sure you spent some of the weekend looking at this news yes. that is not entirely new, as it were. Yeah. But the smuggling part of it looks like a major headline that the NNPC wants to highlight for everyone to see. Yeah. Um, the smuggling is uh, recently actually came to light that um, a lot of the petroleum products that are being refined and imported into Nigeria is being taken out, you know. So um, we know not all these petroleum marketers are actually going to play by the rules. So to a lot of them, um, doing business in Nigeria is no longer profitable, given the fact that um, their landing cost of a liter of petroleum is still at about 171 naira. And um, the federal government and the NNPC still wants them to sell at the pump price of about 145. So um, they are unscrupulous businessmen amongst them. So I think that is just an exit for them to um, make some money. Yes. Uh, yes, but if you get a license yeah. to uh, do petrol retailing business mm -hmm. within the four corners of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and you take in what we refine locally, uh, small as it were, and you take a bit of what we import with our uh, crude oil money, and you take them outside, and you take this product of Nigeria, that's an economic sabotage, if you ask me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that should be punishable very heavily. Yes, it should. It should. We, we, we don't, we don't, um, we as a country, we know that that is illegal as it is, but all the same, it's still going on. It has been going on for a while. I think the reason why this just came to light is the fact that um, there was a call for the NNPC to actually disclose how much money they were paying in subsidies. So to justify that amount, they actually had to say, oh, um, our consumption has risen from about 35 to 60 percent. And then people are asking, if it's 60 percent, how come they are still queues? And they had to reply that, oh, okay, the vast majority of these products are being smuggled out of the country by um, oil marketers and um, people that are trying to cut corners. You know, so we, we, we think it's, 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 a, it's a bad situation, as it may be, but all the same, it's the reality of what it is. So, so we're now technically the hub for West Africa petrol smuggling. Yeah. This is the capital of it. We are the capital <laughs> you, of you, smuggling. You, you can say that. Um, our, our no, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Because, <laughs> that's say, because if you look at the numbers, therefore, if smuggling pushes out our evacuation numbers from 35 million liters per to day 60 to million. 60 million liters per day, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't. I have to score F9 in, in arithmetics or mathematics, and I still get the difference right. Well, yes, um, and if you also consider that as at um, full year 2017, our daily average consumption was at about 47.4 million liters for um, petrol. You can see that there, although there has been a decline, we are actually spending more money 
in um, subsidizing and that is actually because of the fact that oh a lot of these products are not getting to the end users they are not getting to the end consumers we know that um, petrol prices are higher in um, neighboring west african states so these guys think that it's a it's a better play for them to actually sell their product outside the country and they can't do that legally so they yeah. got to do it illegally. Yes. Let's look at the macro fundamentals here about where we go, and this is where the most difficult part of the conversation is whether we should go for full deregulation, full uh, uh, market-based pricing, vis-a-vis yeah. uh, -vis when we can, we have the ability to produce enough locally. If enough is produced locally, where does it go again? Outside the borders. Yeah, um, I think uh, for, 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 for sake of argument, although we know that our lawmakers are not very keen on doing that, we are calling for a very um, um, pronounced deregulation of the oil and gas sector. Let's, let's, let's keep this pricing open so international players, foreign investors can actually come into Nigeria and pull, pull in their funds and the, the product gets a market-based pricing. So now... Which uh, means the price go higher? Yes, the price goes higher, but yes. at the same time, it also allows for competition. So if you're selling your product at, um, let's say, 190 Naira, and someone further down the road decides to sell his at 200 Naira, these are just examples. You, it's, you would, the other person down the road is actually going to be forced to pull his prices down. If not, nobody is going to buy from him. But here we're operating a system where it is already not profitable for you to bring in these products into the country. And at the same time, the NNPC wants you to sell at 145 Naira. So it's not profitable business for them. So deregulating the sector is actually going to allow for... You think price differential will help tame the smuggling? Yes, it would. It would. I mean, if, if, if I'm going to risk it to take my product outside the country and sell it at 250 when I can sell it at the same price in Nigeria, why go through that stretch? Why risk um, arrest? Why risk um, jail time? And you invest in it as well? Yes. So you need investment in smuggling. <laughs> No, okay. No, no, you don't do yeah. any business without any investment. True. Even as even smuggling requires yeah. where you, you need to. No wonder perhaps where you have so many petrol stations uh, across the borders of the country, according yes. to this report. Yeah. And it looks like that's where we're, we're bleeding. Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the route. That's the route through which these products are actually leaving um, the country. We, there's nothing you can do about it. Those are supposedly legitimate businesses. So you can't say, oh, all petrol stations around the borders should be um, shut down because they are um, um, channeling routes for smugglers. Mm. So it's not... It's very, not very, very interesting. Uh, I'm waiting to see if anyone will bring to justice. But it's okay. Yes. Let, let's, let's start with this week with that. Uh, put some petrol uh, in the fire, as it were. Uh, that fire is the conversation around deregulation. Yeah. Valence, thank you very much. It's good to have you here on Business Morning. Valence Moweta from Afro Investment.